Lam brak di hawa brakatha yahaw sha brak di hawa brakatha yahaw sha bahashan rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles, the elders. Salutations to you, sincere brothers, teaching and truth and in sincerity. Lesson will be entitled The Audacity. Lord, will you are edified? My source, Benzinga. Article entitled Pentagon on Possibility of Russian Nuclear Threat. And I quote, we are completely ready. The audacity of these Edomites. Now, when we analyze the term audacity, according to the etymon, it means boldness, courage, daring, vigor, animation. All right. Also, presumptuous, which means self will impudence which means boldness self will boldness okay and our case example is pentagon on possibility of russian nuclear threat we are completely ready and the statement came from patrick ryder the press secretary for the Pentagon. And I quote, what reassurance can the Pentagon give the American people that it is completely ready to deal with a nuclear scenario from Russia? Now, if you know anything about the scriptures, all right, America will be destroyed. Revelation 18 supports that statement. I just declared, and let's just get to the point. Revelation 18 and 11. Let's start in nine. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her, all right, meaning these other nations, made money from America by being submissive, shall be well her. Why? Because that source of income has been terminated and laments for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. Verse 10, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is your judgment come. The audacity of Esau, okay, stating we are completely ready. When according to the words of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah, that America will be destroyed. And America will be destroyed by nuclear capability. Isaiah 34 and 8. For it is the day of the Lord Yahweh's vengeance, the second coming of Yahweh Shah, and the year of recompenses, which means to pay back, for the controversy of Zion, and the streams thereof shall be turned into pitch, referring to America, and the dust thereof into brimstone, referring to America, and the land thereof shall become burning pitch, referring to America. It shall not be quenched night nor day, referring to America. The smoke thereof shall go up forever for a long period of time, referring to America. From generation to generation, it shall lie waste, referring to America. None shall pass through it, referring to America forever and ever, but the 
cormorants and the bittern shall possess it, referring to America. The owl also and the raven shall dwell in it, referring to America. And he shall stretch out on it the line of confusion and the stones of emptiness, referring to America. They shall call the nobles thereof to the kingdom, but none shall be there. Why? Because they will be all deceased. But none shall be there. And all her princes, meaning her leaders, shall be nothing. They're dead. Verse 13. And thorns shall come up in her palaces, nettles and brambles in the fortresses thereof. And it shall be an habitation of dragons and a court for owls. Referring to America. The wild beasts of the desert shall also meet. With the wild beasts of the island, and the satyr shall cry to his fellow, the screech owl also shall rest there and find for herself a place of rest. And she will have a tremendous, large place to rest. Okay, verse 15. There shall the great owl make her nest and lay. So we can see that the new tenants of America post destruction will be desert like creatures. Okay? These are the new tenants of America. There shall the great owl make her nest and lay and hatch and gather under her shadow. There shall the vultures also be gathered, every one with her mate. Okay? I repeat, the audacity of Esau. Okay, America is going to be destroyed during the event of WW3. Okay? And I assume that Patrick Henry does not believe in Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. Daniel 4 and 17, this matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living, right, the elect may know that the most high rule in the kingdom of men and give it to whomsoever he will and set up over it the basis of men. Esau is the basis of men. OK, and at this time frame, we are in the end of Esau's rulership and Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah will use WW3 as an assistant to knock Esau out of his dominion. OK, let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter three and verse one. To everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose of. Under the heaven, under the heaven, the place is earth, okay? A time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up. We are witnessing Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah pluck up the kingdom of Edom as he is planting the kingdom of Israel, all right? That which is planted. So what is planted right now? What is planted right now? The kingdom of Edom. Now who controls the season, the times? Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah. Okay? And within his will is to destroy the nation of Edom at the allotted time and put back in position, back into rulership, the kingdom of Israel, right? Isaiah chapter 10 and verse verse 5. O Assyrian, the rod of my anger, and the staff in their hand is my indignation. See, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah, placed Esau in a position of authority, going into that blessing. Okay? 
And Yahweh did this through our big brother, Yahweh Shah. Ecclesiasticus chapter 10 and verse 9. Why is earth and ashes proud? Referring to these fucking Edomites in this case. Okay, there is not a more wicked thing than a covetous man. For such an one set his spirit to sail because while he lived, he cast away his bowels, meaning his mind. Okay, however, the point is earth and ashes is proud. Why? Because we're nothing but fucking mere mortals. Okay, we don't have everlasting life. All right. And for Esau to make a statement that they are ready when the scriptures is pointing otherwise, okay, earth and ashes is showing to be extremely proudful. The fucking audacity. Ecclesiasticus chapter 17 and 32. He viewed the power of the height of heaven and all men are but earth and ashes, mere mortals okay mere mortals and the he is referring to yahweh bashem yahweh shah isaiah 10 and 15 shall the axe boast itself against him that hew therewith or shall the saw magnify itself against him that shake it as if the rod should shake itself against them that lift it up, or as if the staff should lift up itself as if it were no wood. So this is nothing but symbolic talk that shows that Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah controls all creation. Okay? And Esau is nothing but an axe. And the Most High is handling that axe into the position that he wants okay so lord will you are edified shalom